Greetings gaming enthusiasts! Welcome to the next part of our comprehensive guide to the exciting world of Parallel, the innovative collectible card game. In this video, we will delve into the complexities of the various cards and assets that make up this unique gaming experience. For those of you who have not yet familiarized yourself with the Parallel ecosystem, we highly recommend that you check out our introductory video first. Simply click on the link now displayed on your screen to catch up. As you are no doubt aware, there are five distinct parallels in the game, each with its own distinct set of cards. To construct a viable deck, players must choose to focus on only one of these parallels, as combining two or three is not permitted. Additionally, the game features universal cards that can be added to any deck, similar to the neutral cards in Hearthstone. When constructing your deck in parallel, keep in mind that it must consist of exactly 40 cards with a limit of three copies of each card, except for the legendaries, which are limited to a single copy. The starting point for all players is the basic cards known as apparitions. These cards can be earned through gameplay or obtained through the purchase of in-game packs sold by Parallel Studios. However, it is important to note that these cards are not NFTs and therefore cannot be traded or sold. Nevertheless, using these cards in battle will still earn you some prime tokens, but significantly less than what can be obtained from using NFT cards. It is crucial to note that each and every one of the assets I'll mention in this video is a non-fungible token, NFT, securely stored on the Ethereum blockchain. To have a closer look at all the cards and assets, simply follow the link provided on the screen or in the description section of this video. Now, regarding the cost of these assets, it is essential to keep in mind that the prices can be highly unstable. The cost of each asset is primarily influenced by its rarity and edition size. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that the economy of the game is still in its developing stages and some details remain undisclosed. Now let us take a look at this first edition card, the most commonly encountered type in the game. You will notice that it is an Ogencore parallel card with a QR code located at the bottom right corner. This code plays a crucial role in the AR representation of the card and helps you determine its rarity, which in this case is blue, signifying common rarity. The card is named Hard Linked Pilot and has an edition size of 60,000 copies, meaning that there are only 60,000 existing copies in circulation. However, future sets may introduce more copies. Finally, it is worth noting the set name, which at the current alpha stage of the game is simply Parallel Alpha. The rarity of a card is directly proportional to its edition size, with the rarer the card, the smaller the edition size. To clarify, the edition size of common cards varies from 30,000 to 60,000, uncommon from 6,000 to 20,000, rare from 1,500 to 3,500, and legendary from 500 to 1,000. Additionally, there is a prime rarity that highlights the most sought after and scarce cards and assets in the game. Currently, there are only two cards with the prime rarity, the first Sun on Mars, with an edition size of 5, and the singular priming. It is also worth noting that some cards with the same name may appear differently. This is because certain cards come in day and night versions, split evenly from the edition size. Moving forward, let's look at the special edition cards. These cards are immediately distinguishable by their unique color on the QR code. Compared to first edition cards, SE cards are relatively more scarce, with much smaller edition sizes, and boast eye-catching, shiny effects. These cards are particularly valuable to collectors, as they will be exchangeable for physical versions of the card and will not be printed again. Finally, allow me to introduce the perfect loop cards, which are animated versions of the cards. These cards will not only be available in the game, but also in the AR representation, providing a truly immersive experience for players. Let's now delve into the world of masterpieces. These highly sought after items possess an edition size of 1, making them among the rarest assets in the game. As a reward for owning a masterpiece, the owner is entitled to a 1% royalty from the sales of the represented card. Please do keep in mind that the information provided in this video is not to be taken as financial advice. Moving on, we have the art cards, which are primarily black and white prototypes of certain cards. With a limited edition size of 8, they can also serve as unique card backs. Another fascinating aspect of the game is the Artigraph. It is a parallel alpha card that has been digitally signed by the artist who designed it. An Artigraph offers the same functionalities as its unautographed counterpart, but can be upgraded to a signed version by using a certain amount of prime tokens. Please note that upgrading to an Artigraph will result in the burning of the original unautographed card. Proceeding forward, we shall delve into the fascinating world of assets referred to as keys. 
These keys will serve a crucial role in the game as they offer various bonuses to players. The key framing system enables players to reap benefits from up to three keys stored in their digital wallets. First and foremost, we have the Overclock key. This key offers attractive rewards for win streaks in the form of additional Prime tokens and holds a reservation for a highly coveted physical collectible to be released in the future. Next, we have the Galaxy key. This key possesses the ability to randomly increase the in-game emission of Prime tokens, adding an element of excitement to the game. Multifold key makes non-NFT copies of a specific card act as if they were NFTs if the player has one NFT of the card. Surge key enhances the amount of renown gained from winning games, which is used to replicate cards and create new non-NFT versions. Owners also get a free starter deck. The Prismatic key selects a parallel daily and increases prime emissions for winning games with the selected parallel. The Gravity key offers a chance at legendary rewards like prime tournament tickets, rare titles, emotes and cosmetics for winning a match with it activated. The Prime key has out-of-game utilities like special access to drops and NFTs and grants one additional key framing slot. The Core offers you the chance to earn 1% of secondary sales from various in-game items, including assets, art cards, card backs, and masterpieces. The Core also grants you the added bonus of Prime plus key modifiers on a daily basis. The Catalyst Drive, on the other hand, acts as the gateway to Prime tokens. All you need to do is insert a Prime key into the Catalyst Drive and it transforms into a Prime Drive. Although the Prime Key, the Core, Catalyst Drive and Prime Drive may not seem like they hold much significance in the game, I assure you that they are indeed valuable. By caching these elements, which means putting them in the Ethereum smart contract, you can passively earn Prime tokens and receive potential airdrops from the Parallel team. These assets are not locked, which means you can take them back anytime you want. Additionally, you could cash the whole Prime set or any masterpiece. And with that, our parallel cards and assets journey comes to an end for now. But fear not, as there's more to come. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to show your support by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. More thrilling content related to parallel is on the horizon, and you wouldn't want to miss a beat. Additionally, I invite you to join the MetaGuild Discord community. This is the ultimate hub for true TCG veterans and collectors, where you can connect and exchange insights with like-minded individuals. So, join us and become a part of the Hardcore Gaming Collective today. Until next time, farewell and happy gaming.